I'll, I'll try and keep this short because I, I know at 1.30 we've got a soccer match on, so <laughs> we, we want to be ready for that. And some of us, me, need a longer warm-up period. Um, so so I, I might even leave before my presentation's finished <laughs> to, to warm up on the oval, okay? Uh, w welcome, everyone. Welcome back to Levi. Thank you so much. Um, when Levi heard that I was presenting, he come across from Colorado, so I was very impressed <laughs> with that. So thank you very much. Um, my presentation will be a little bit different. Um, it centres around a, an opinion piece I had on the conversation, um, which is a, a good forum for getting ideas out there and lifting the, the profile of ACU. Um, both Lazar and myself contribute to the conversation. I don't know if anyone else here has. Um, so it's just a way of getting your ideas out. Um, it, it, it is on the conversation you've, you've presented, Lazar, your, your most recent one. Well, it is, uh, an, an opinion piece. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, well, the most number of uh, comments. Comments. So. And the conversation, I don't know if anyone gets the emails where they're asking for experts each day, but um, just keep an eye out for that. You know, if they send a request and they want an expert on a particular topic um, and it's aligns with you, well then go for it. I see that there was, they had an expert request today for dandruff. Um, so if we have an expert here that knows about dandruff, <laughs> that's, a, that's a way to make a name for yourself, talking about dandruff. Anyway, I wrote an opinion piece a little while ago on uh, um, uh, racism surveys. And racism is a big topic in Australia, uh, particularly for Aboriginal people. So whenever that topic is in the news, there's always a lot of commentary, and a lot of commotion about it. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about today is surveys on racism, particularly for Aboriginal people. Um, and I've entitled it Surveys on Racism, the Good, the Bad, and of course, the Ugly. So that's the sort of the bit I bring to the topic on racism, the ugly bits which um, people don't get to hear about very often. Okay. Everyone's claiming racism against Aboriginal people is everywhere in this country. Okay. Whether we like it or not, Australia is a racist society. Although that woman's done quite well for herself, she's a professor in a university, an Aboriginal professor in a university. At a day-to-day -day level, Indigenous Australians are constantly victims of racism and discrimination. Uh, modernist Australia is, defining, is defined by humanity, inhumanity, racism and ongoing civil strife. I'll let you read these yourselves. Now, there was an organisation, Beyond Blue, who do a lot with mental health, and they commissioned a survey to be done uh, about 12 months ago now. And there was a big finding from that survey, which they've um, has been picked up by the media, which they've promoted. And it's this one here. Some of you may have seen the Beyond Blue campaign. Um, and the, the big finding was 20% still think it's okay to discriminate against Indigenous Australians, which is, uh, when you read that, it's not a, a, a nice finding, but that's the reality. However, I had a look at the survey questions and some of the questions I found very interesting and I phoned up the people who ran the survey um, and asked them if I could get the data which they kindly sent to me. And other things that were in the data, were in the survey, in the results which were not picked up by the media, was that there was an item, I would be happy for Indigenous Australians to be a part of my friendship group. On a scale of, like at scale of zero to 10, the mean was eight. And I think that's very positive. Again, on a scale of zero to 10, the mean was three for I feel anxious or uncomfortable around Indigenous Australians. Again, I think is a very positive finding. And so those last two, which were not picked up by the media and were not promoted by Beyond Blue, seem at odds with the first one. 
um, and you think, well, how, how could it be such, there could be such, you know, variation there. Uh, I've already answered the question for you, which one's received most publicity? It was that one there. That was the only one that was picked up. But consider this. Here's another way of looking at that same result. I think most people would agree when you word it that way, that up to 80% think that it's not okay or neither agreed nor disagreed that it was okay to discriminate against Indigenous Australians. That's more consistent with the other two findings from the survey. Okay. So those quotes I gave on racism uh, about how what a terribly racist nation Australia is, which one resonates? Which presentation of the finding resonates with those opening quotes? I don't think it's too difficult to see um, that if you want to promote the view that Australia is a nasty racist country, you say that 20% still think it's okay to discriminate against Indigenous Australians. Okay. So why were these results not picked up by the media? And what do they tell us? And would these findings help with reconcilia reconciliation between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal Australians. I think that they, these findings do need to be promoted. It paints a more accurate picture of Australia and it would greatly help with the reconciliation pro pro program, progress, whatever, but uh, for a host of reasons, that's not what researchers and um, the media chose to run with. Um, just, hey, yep. Did uh, the Odd Blue choose to focus on that or was that something the media picked up out of a bigger report? I, I've had a look, a uh, brief look through all the Beyond Blue campaigns and no, they have not mentioned those at all. Okay, yeah. So I can understand when, you, when you've got to make a point, that's fine and certainly that is a point that needs to be made, mm. but some other points need to be made. So the short answer, no, Beyond Blue have not been proactive. Um, and having said that though, the media could have just as easily done what I'd done and, and ring up and the... The media is really good at picking up bad news. Yeah. You know, that's what they think sells. Yep. Or reinforcing existing... Um, not even that. Even yeah. I think picking up bad news. I right. Mean, you, you look at uh, the television news reports and so forth, and most of what you get is pretty Of course, yeah. The only place that's positive is maybe yeah. sports. Yeah, exactly. Now, if, if what you saw on the 6 o'clock news was a reflection of what happens every day, you wouldn't leave your house. Okay. But, Anthony, uh, you know, you're talking about the uh, gas because indigenous uh, Australians. Uh, uh, but there are equal, equally racist uh, feelings about uh, other groups. Yeah. Now, there, there is 20% uh, who hate Muslims, for example. Good, good point. And what, one of my other um, co colleagues here from IPI made the same point, said, you know, that survey should also ask the question about um, how you feel about people from Muslim groups, from this group, from that group as well. And the, what they were suggesting was you'll find that it's, it's not... If people are uncomfortable or whatever you want to call it, it's not necessarily racism, it's just when you see something different, people are a little bit uncomfortable. And, you know, sure, that's a problem, but it's certainly not as bad as racism, and racism has that, you know, connotation of intentional harm or dislike or that sort of thing. So, yes, I agree 100%. And that would certainly give um, a bit more balance to things. Okay, so just going beyond, going beyond, beyond blue, I looked at other, so looking at other research. Um, Victoria Health did this survey and found that 97% of those surveyed, had, so Aboriginal people, had experienced racism in the previous 12 months. Um, you know, had they have surveyed me, I'd be, I guess, one of the 3% who, who didn't. Um, anyway, that, that's, you think, wow, that's quite a claim. When you read further down in the document, it's self-reported, okay? So it's just, you know, 
are you of the opinion that you know you received some racism in the last 12 months and I'll be talking about memory shortly okay. um, Dunn and Nelson um, also did another um, or looked at some other surveys 85% of survey participants agree or strongly agree that there is racial prejudice in Australia let me just do a quick survey among the people here put up your hands for me if you think there are shark attacks in Australia shark attacks in Australia so yeah you probably don't know Australia that well um, but about 75% of people agree that yep there are shark attacks in Australia yet that finding tells me practically nothing about the frequency or the severity of the shark attacks um, so a finding like that is near useless so a little bit about memory uh, one of my favorite psychologists Aronson um, said memories are often pruned and shaped by ego enhancing bias that blurs the the edges of past events and I realize here that with the psychologists here they, they already know this but it's just worth uh, reminding that you know with memories they don't they're not like a tape recording it's their memories are reconstructive a reconstructive process Aronson again says our memories get distorted in such a way that they fit the general picture we have of ourselves most of us con construct self-enhancing egocentric biases that make us feel special Philip Zimbardo Schachter in his book on memory, self-enhancing biases can also result from exaggerating the difficulty of past experiences. So it should not come as a surprise that when you ask people of a particular group, have you been a victim or a target of racism, that does provide an opportunity for them to hmm, boost the ego. Yes, I've been a victim of that and I've survived, kind of thing. And of course, um, Every problem you have in life can then be explained by the racism you've received in the past. Uh, the definition of racism is very, very elastic. Um, you know, there's, there's no one set definition, but they generally converge on the notion of intentional um, disfavoring or harm of a, an individual or a group purely on the basis of race. Consider this one, AIHW reported that the majority, again this would seem to be a good result, so 83% of the Indigenous adults surveyed indicated that they had been treated the same as non-Indigenous people when seeking health care in the previous 12 months. And you know just my I guess intuition, common sense, dealings in this area would, uh, as would most people here, would think well, yeah that's probably a reasonable close to the mark finding. And again, I think it's very positive, like uh, the initial findings from the Beyond Blue campaign. How do they know? I was going to say, how do they know how white, how non-Indigenous people... Are well, uh, well, that's, well, I guess it's free of discrimination. There's the assumption that non-Indigenous people don't get discriminated against. Right. So, yeah. On the basis of that assumption, yeah. that's the question. I'm, I'm guessing, yeah. However... An AIHW report recommended that the current definition of racism, um, current definitions are too narrow and that the concept of discrimination should be expanded to capture oppression and racism. So you don't get the figure you like. They would much prefer that a, you know, a lower proportion of Indigenous people say, yep, I've uh, been treated the same way as non-Indigenous people. So the solution is, rather than see that as being a good thing, let's broaden the, the definition of racism and let's hopefully capture more victims of racism. Uh, my friends in the Northern Territory, um, Bess and Dave Price, Bess being a full-blooded Aboriginal woman um, who knows what racism is firsthand. Her and her husband, uh, her husband of 30 years, have that to say. I'll let you read that for yourselves. So up there in the Northern Territory where many of the Aboriginal people are as black as my jumper, uh, racism w would be the least 
of their concerns. It's not a big issue up there. Um, but we tend to, and I, I had this, um, I'll come to this in a minute, but let me just go through this. So some examples of where we assume, did someone have a question? Oh, no, okay. Ambulance drivers' resistance to pick up, and I read this in a journal, resistance to pick up patients living in town camps or remote area communities depicted a strong example of institutionalised racism. So institutional racism is um, racism at an organisational, you know, practices that overtly or covertly promote racism. Okay. Um, Dave and Bess, who I, I was speaking to, about this. Uh, in fact, they told me this a long time ago before I saw this um, quote, so it was sort of like a, a good find for me when I, when I saw the quote. I thought, wow, this fits in nicely with what my friends in the Northern Territory have been telling me. They were telling me that their Aboriginal granddaughter, so granddaughter in the Aboriginal sense, meaning not a biological granddaughter, but in the extended family, what they call an Aboriginal daughter, so like a sister's uh, grandchild, their 24-year-old four year Aboriginal granddaughter was murdered in a town camp, stabbed in the back by her estranged partner who already had a AVO, you know, an order on him. And they said it took an hour for the ambulance to get there or to go in because the ambulance people wait for police um, to go with them. They, need, they will not go into community camps because of the violence. If you're white and you're wearing a uniform, well, e even if you're black and you're wearing a uniform and you go into those camps, you can expect bad things to happen to you. Um, so Dave and Bess told me they don't blame the ambulance drivers for taking so long to get to the camp. Um, they said they blame the idiots who have caused the violence in those camps. So the point is, although that's seen as a racist event, it's not a racist event. Uh, Coming from a, uh, a book which um, Ippi produced, by the way, um, some surveys of, it, of Indigenous people were done. Um, John Howard, an avid walker, wouldn't even walk across the bridge for the sake of reconciliation. Now, if the leaders of our country can't or don't want to move forward in taking its nation into a, into a non-racist attitude, that's word for word, which is why the English isn't, the grammar isn't perfect. Um, I don't think it's too hard to see that there could be other reasons for John Howard, who was the PM at the time, Prime Minister, for not taking part in the bridge walk, other than being racist. Another one from the same research study, a interviewee said, in a town of 25,000 people, you go down the road to the main CBD and count all the Aboriginal people who you know, basically saying you can't see any Aboriginal people. Again, that's word for word. I don't think it's too hard to see that if you don't see many Indigenous people employed, uh, there are other explanations besides racism. The ABS, and th this is a, a shocking finding in itself, uh, which is perhaps a topic for another time. So just over one quarter of the prison population in Australia are Indigenous. Okay? Yet they make up 3% of the nation's population. It's assumed that it's racism that puts them in there, okay? It's not. The main reason, and this will uh, come as no surprise, the main reason for people, Indigenous people going to jail is the same as the main reason for non-Indigenous people going to jail, committing crimes. Okay. And the, the best analyses show that racism is um, not the cause. I was speaking to an Aboriginal police officer in the Northern Territory in one of the town camps who's very popular among the people, a white woman, and she said if you knew the standards that they're held to and the procedures they have to go through, she said it's just about impossible um, to, you know, to have the wrong, to put someone in jail or make an arrest for any other reason other than they commit the crime. It's not like in the United States if you're a black driver, you're much more likely to be pulled over by the cops yep. than if you're a white driver. Yeah, I mean, certainly those, those things happen. There's no denying that. But that's why they end up going to jail, is because they're more likely to be pulled over. On the look, yeah. Or whatever else in their car. 
car. Yeah. And so, in other words, because they're more likely to, at least more likely to kind of racial profile them. Yeah. And that is racist. Well, there's often good reasons for, I mean, there was a, a police officer at Redfern telling me when they receive a, a report to be on the lookout for a um, person of Aboriginal appearance because they, you know, they committed the crime, when they're walking down the street, they're going to be asking every Aboriginal person questions. He said it's unavoidable. Uh, if they're looking for, because an Aboriginal person was the person they're after, they have to approach. Yeah, but uh, not, Aboriginal people. They're not half the black people in America, but they don't they, it's just more likely that they're going to pull over white sure. people. White people are also doing the same crime, but since they're not going to be pulled over, yep, fair enough. therefore yep. the black people will end up in jail more, only because black people are they're being they're targeted more. Yeah. yeah. So they're both doing crimes, and they're both going to go to jail for doing crimes, but more black people. The spotlight is more on the black people, sure. Because they're going to be pulled over more. Yep. Okay. I, not to a major degree, I don't believe. You know, it, it, it's certainly possibly a contributing factor. Um, and there are certainly rogue police officers out there who will make it their business to target every black person they see. But they couldn't possibly account for why 27% of the population. So yeah, it's a contributing factor, but I couldn't explain that. Aboriginal deaths in custody, which um, the Australian people would here would be familiar with um, and that was a concern that um, because Aboriginal people appeared to be dying at higher rates than non-Aboriginal people in jail there was a concern of racism and a conspiracy there and so there was a huge expensive inquiry Royal Commission into Aboriginal deaths in custody and it found from day one and as it said in the initial report, um, you know, this, the finding may not be pleasing to a lot of people, but when you look at the data, Aboriginal people do not die at higher rates than non-Aboriginal people in jail. What happens is every time there is a black death in custody, it hits the papers. Every time there is a black death outside of jails, like uh, my friend's granddaughter, it doesn't hit the papers. When Aboriginal people are murdered by Aboriginal people, it doesn't hit the papers. If, it's, if a white person can be implicated, it hits the, the media. When there's a white death in custody, and interestingly too, uh, you saw the figures, you know, 27% of uh, people in jail are Indigenous, but approximately 20% of deaths in jail are Indigenous. So you know, that can only be a good thing. If, if it was a bad thing, you'd expect more than 27% of the deaths to be indigenous. But it's, yes? But I've heard Aboriginal people's uh, life expectancy is about 20 years yep. less than other non-Aboriginal Australians. What do you think of that? Yep. Um, there's a whole host of reasons w why that is. Um, they live in poorer conditions. Um, their body hasn't adapted to the westernised diet as... as well as what westernised people are adapted to it. Um, yeah, so there's a whole host of reasons. So um, are you suggesting that that in itself is a, a racist? Not necessarily. Oh, it, oh, right. shows that it certainly shows that they're disadvantaged. Oh, before. absolutely. <coughs> absolutely. No question about it. I, I, I'm, yeah. To play the devil's advocate, yep. you're reacting to the 20% of people in your saying that it's okay to be to discriminate against Aboriginal people. Yeah. What, so you're saying 80% don't, so that's good news. Yeah, and I, I, I certainly, I would like to see it 100%, you know. Right, so what, so, I guess that was my question. What percentage is an acceptable percentage? What, what, how low can it go? I mean, 5%, if 5% people endorse, another 95% don't endorse, is that good news? Well, it's like unemployment. We should be aiming for 0%, you know, whether or not we'll, we will get there. How is it changing over time? That's another perspective yeah. to look at. And so one would assume, or at least hope, that those percentages are show a trend. Shrinking, yeah. yeah. But one of the problems is, though, as Dave and Bess Price said, it, um, the overemphasis focus on racism displaces priorities. 
So we're no longer concerned about, um, which I'll be getting to shortly, the violence, the child abuse. Those things get swept under the carpet. Okay, high rates of alcoholism, smoking, all that sort of thing get swept under the carpet because of this obsession. And I'll be talking why there is an obsession, I'll be explain why I think there's an obsession so, so there's a with racism. between problems within Aboriginal communities uh, and problems that could be coming from non-Aboriginal yep. communities directed towards Aboriginal yep. that, that seems to be important. Absolutely, yes. So there's no disagreement that there would be yeah. problems within Aboriginal communities like alcoholism or violence yep. or something like that. Uh, but I think when media picks up on that 20% or something, it's the other group doing something bad to Aboriginal people. And I don't think there's anything wrong with highlighting it if they are doing it. But if it sends the message that all the problems facing Aboriginal people are due to the non-Aboriginal people, the message for the Aboriginal people then is, okay, there's not much I can do to make a difference in my life. Um, well, you know, I must wait for constitutional recognition or a treaty or a black prime minister before things get better, which is not a good message to send. So it may be actually good for non-Aboriginal people to see that 20%, but not for the Aboriginal. Is that what, is that what you're saying? Say that again. That it may be good for non-Aboriginal communities to see that 20% that you guys do bad things to Aboriginal people. But within Aboriginal communities, it may send a wrong message. Possibly, is yeah. That, is that the idea? Yeah. yeah. Right. I was just wondering, do you have like any evidence that you know of to say that it is a bad thing to that 20% figure for Aboriginal people to be aware of? Because I feel like if you don't kind of recognise and highlight it, I feel, and this applies to a whole host of like yeah. marginalised groups in society, I feel like it could be really invalidating if you are, like I still think 20% is a big number, like if you're a person out in the street every day, 20% of all people, I mean think of all the people you come across yeah. and say, I still think that is a really... I think it is too, I think it is too. And I just... I don't know, I feel like... Yeah, I'm certainly not trying to downplay it, but I think it has been exaggerated and, and leveraged yeah. um, to promote the us-them mentality and we're victims and... But, like, is there evidence to say that, being aware of that? Kind of so, evidence? I don't understand, is there evidence? Sorry, yeah. is there evidence to say that, like, being aware of... Um, discrimination occurring make, like has a negative impact on people in Aboriginal community because I think there's anecdotal evidence to suggest that if you think everyone's against you yeah. um, it certainly diminishes any um, proactiveness initiative hope and that sort of thing Actually, there's evidence in well, I don't I'm not familiar with Australian um, racism research, but there's certainly evidence in um, North American yeah. research on racism, which actually suggests the opposite, that uh, black Americans who are aware of the, the, the disadvantage or discrimination against their group and are made aware in experimental studies actually have higher self-esteem okay. uh, because they can attribute whatever negative thing that's coming negative oh, Of course, yes. Yeah, they can sure attribute it to yeah. racism and not take it personally. So it actually protects them from yeah. knowing that it's other people, are, it's their ignorance. It's not something about me, yeah. it's them. It, it protects their self-esteem. Yeah, so I think Crocker has... But that's yeah. not inconsistent with what uh, Anthony suggested. He's uh, saying that they use, but the, uh, people might use that as an excuse for not doing something uh, proactive. Uh, so. That's not necessarily inconsistent with what you're saying. Okay. Is, is that right? So it's just saying this might have a coping function. Um, that that uh, you know, this kind of attributing things to racism might, may have a sort of coping function for Indigenous people. At, at one level, yeah. Um, yeah. So if, if it, yeah, if, if if when something goes wrong. Um, and you know the white prime minister makes a decision 
Um, and let's face it, you know, politicians make decisions which none of us are happy with, um, which you know, often disadvantage us in many ways. Um, if that's framed as a racist act, then yeah, everything that goes wrong, it, it comes down to, yep, that's, that's racism, I can't do much about it. That's to be expected. Um, you know, combine that with the objective data of the high rates of imprisonment and uh, suicide rates and shortened life expectancy and that sort of thing. Yeah. I think a lot of this would be really appropriate if there was a kind of central theme within the kind of dominant discourse in, indige in our Indigenous population that externalises the cause of their problems, that doesn't believe that they are the cause of their problems, but that the problems come from outside. Mm. If that's the case, then, then the 20% discussion is probably not that helpful because, of course, that just reifies their belief that there's nothing that they yeah. can do. Is that is that being prevalent in that population? Oh, I, I don't know, to be honest. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so th these are just some guesses as to why the obsession with racism. Uh, undoubtedly, I mean, just the fact of colonisation, the invasion, whatever you want to call it, which, um, you know, where the, the white people arrived and, and did all the atrocious things, um, that has a racist flavour to it. So the past is definitely racist. Uh, Australian researcher Hugh Mackay, one of my favourite researchers, said our observations in life tend, and others have said similar things of course, tend to confirm this perspective from which they were made. So yes, if you have this belief, this paradigm of yeah, racism's everywhere and that's the cause of problems, well then that's what you, uh, it's, it's easy to explain uh, problems in terms of, yep, yeah, that's a result of racism. Um, one of my favourites, I know this, um, this, the survey on racism, you know, that 20% think it's like, I know that for some people around the country that is um, masturbation material for them. They love it. They thrive on it. Uh, and hate me when I suggest alternatives. Focusing on racism is easier than addressing the high rates of violence in, Ab in Aboriginal communities. It's far easier than addressing or discussing, discussing the high rates of child abuse in Aboriginal communities. Uh, and just a very quick, I won't go through all of these, okay, but Aboriginal leader Mick Dodson, violence is undermining our life's very essence. It is destroying us. To read the many reports detailing violence in our communities is to make one weep. Aboriginal people, well, for Aboriginal women, 69 times more likely to be admitted to hospital uh, for skull injuries. Uh, Aboriginal politician and sports star Nova Paris made the claim that Aboriginal women in the Northern, Northern Territory are 80 times more likely to be hospitalised for assault. Um, just read those quickly. So these are very real issues which um, I know from personal experience if you discuss them, one, you won't win a popularity contest if you submit it to a journal, you, it just won't happen. Um, black American Larry Elder, who wrote a good book, What's Race Got to Do With It? I think he summed it up well. Okay. So what are the implications? Are Aboriginal people more or less likely to focus on what they personally can do to improve their lives if they believe racism is the big culprit. Um, so I'm not saying, again, I'm not denying the, the existence of racism, but I think it is given too much weight um, as a cause to the problems facing Aboriginal people. Does the assumption that racism is a large problem promote or hinder reconciliation and relationships? Okay. Um, so in the Aboriginal communities, um, when they are, are led to believe, when they're taught, hey, Aboriginal people are being slaughtered in jail, um, that makes it very difficult for police officers to do anything in communities. Uh, again, uh, just a quote there from Hugh Mackay. 
Some disclaimers on this um, presentation um, before I leave you with some questions that uh, if we have some time um, we could discuss. So I'm not denying the existence of racism against Aboriginal people because that's probably the leading criticism that gets fired at me. Oh, Anthony said there's no such thing as racism in Australia. Um, that has never been the case. And interestingly, um, the Indigenous opponents um, who would criticise me, who are you know, often as bad as white as some of the people here, um, don't know what racism is. I know what racism is. I've experienced it many times. So I'm not suggesting that Aboriginal people are to blame for every problem they have. And it should also be noted that finding a solution for a problem, being responsible for finding a solution for a problem, doesn't mean that you are the cause of that problem. So again, uh, that's uh, another criticism that gets fired at me. As soon as I suggest that here's something that Indigenous people can do, I'm ac accused of blaming the victim, which I'm not. It's worth repeating again. Okay. Um, this will make some people happy. Okay. <laughs> I thought I would say it again. Okay, so please, if there's one message you walk out of here with, I'm not denying the existence of racism. If you're watching this on YouTube, I am not denying the existence of racism. Oh, because the best way to defeat your, or not the best way, but one way, I think that's called the straw man argument. You misrepresent your opponent's argument. So, um, saying that racism is not the huge problem very quickly morphs into racism doesn't exist. And that's not my message. Okay, so it's just some thoughts, um, questions, ideas, challenges. Given the issues surrounding self-reporting, and I'm not saying we should do away with self-reporting data, if that was um, question is, if that was the case, we wouldn't have jobs. Um, should we engage in research that seeks to show the true rate of racism, if that's possible? I don't know if it is. How can the true rate, or at least a better estimate, of racism be determined? For one, you'd need a um, a good, robust definition of racism, or at least be able to need to categorise the different levels of racism. How to regain focus on the most important issues, which is, which is um, the, the greatest burning desire I have. Okay? How can we focus on those more important things? So ensuring that Indigenous people have the same opportunities or access to the same opportunities as you and I. Um, it's important to say access because what they do with those opportunities is in their business. So I'm not saying they need to go to school, they need to be in school, they should just have access to schools, jobs and that sort of thing. And if they want to take it, great, but they should at least um, have the op access to the opportunity. How do we talk about sensitive to topics that need to be talked about? And so examples of sensitive topics in this um, arena being violence, child abuse, and also it is a sensitive topic to suggest that racism may not be, be the big culprit of um, problems facing Aboriginal people. That's a very sensitive topic. Are there perhaps better, more objective measures of progress? Because after all, when we talk about racism, we're looking at, you know, there's the assumption that, it, that it's hindering progress. Um, so I just wonder if there are better measures of progress that would suggest that um, racism is, is being dealt with or minimised or eliminated. Um, yeah, so they're the, the, they're the questions. That's the end of the presentation. Um, hopefully something a little bit different for you. And it was a topic I, I suggested to Eva. I said, look, you know, if you need a fill-in or um, put me at the end of the list, you know, sometime it's not something I had a burning desire to do because I know that there are other more scholarly academic things to do in brown bag, but so I said, you know, if there's room for it, we'll put it in. Okay, so if there's any questions. <laughs> we 
Well, when does this go on YouTube? Because that's, that's when I'm going to get a bodyguard. I think. <laughs> yes, Rob? Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, it's a strong predictor of health um, and you know general well-being. So yeah, perception so of racism. perception, you know, perceived racism. So yeah, the link is undeniable. So the improvement does suggest that they're perceived. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt about that. But you know, is it causal? Which way does it go? Okay. Um, it, it's it's pretty robust. You know, I'm I'm I have no problem admitting that it's quite a robust predictor of, um, you know, bad, bad things. Yep. Herb, you had a question? Um, interesting issue about the di difference between discrimination and, uh, and racism. I mean, the, the, the term discrimination is a real funny one because the way that you're using it here is that it's people are being unfairly discriminated against. Yes. And yet, as psychologists, we develop tests to discriminate between people all the yeah. time and argue that that's a good thing to do. Yes. So it gets a real thing. And so there's that issue of what discrimination means. Yeah, certainly in this context, I'm talking about the negative. Oh, no, no, I yeah, understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. But the other is just as a legitimate. And it's not as if they don't overlap. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Would you be in favor of discriminating, not against, but for them? Because they are such disadvantaged groups, should Aboriginal Australians receive special treatment? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like the word special. Um, I would say appropriate treatment. So, you know, in terms of scholarships and tuition and training and, you know, even some identified positions that, you know, get help. Indigenous people get a foot in the door and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's fine. And look, when you have those sorts of things, there's always going to be an abuse of it. And I think that's a small price to pay if it helps, um, you know, Indigenous people get a start. And many successful Indigenous people um, today got to where they are because someone gave them a special treatment, if you like, um, a help up. And so, yeah, no, I, I don't have a problem with that. Of, um, like implicit prejudice and stuff like that because we talked a lot about, I guess, overt kind of racism yeah. today. Um, okay, look, Tansy. Yeah, yeah, look, I mean, they, ideally they should all be eliminated. Um, with the milder forms of, and you know, th again, this is a topic um, for another time, like, say, verbal racism, which is one of my favourite ones, there's this assumption. A faulty assumption, I'll add, if you get called a bad name or whatever and you're upset, that bad name has caused you to be upset. It has, it has not caused you to be upset because some people like me laugh when they hear those names. I say, bring it on, you know. Someone calls me an ugly, ugly black bastard. I say, thank you very much for your opinion. I really appreciate that. It doesn't worry me in the slightest. So with those sorts of um, milder forms of racism, although it might be nice to eliminate them, I think there is a much better way of eliminating them than having programs which says, you must not do this. I would suggest, and again, you get accused of blaming the victim, but I think it's far more empowering to go to the targets. Hey, when this happens, you know, when the shopkeeper laughs at you or whatever, there's a much better response you can give. Um, and, you know, let's face it, the, the perpetrators of racism will continue doing it for as long as they get rewarded for doing it. So every time, you know, they, they call you a nasty name, if it makes you cry, you know, if you cry as a result, they're gonna keep doing it. They'll do it to the next time, next person. You know, it's a bit like the flasher. When, um, when the little old lady laughs at him, he doesn't do it anymore. He's quickly deflated. So at the end of the day, you know, behavior is a function of its consequences. So I think it's far more, far more empowering to teach indigenous people, hey, let's not reward these people uh, these racists who have low self-esteem um, because you cannot have good robust self-esteem and 
be a racist at the same time. Um, there's much better ways of dealing with it. Um, so, you know, it's got to come at from both sides, you know, the, the target and the perpetrators, but I think we spent far too much energy and resources on promoting you must not do this, rather than teaching Indigenous people and other people of minority groups, hey, the reality is in the real world this is going to happen, but look, here are some strategies you can do to better manage it. Yep. In the surveys, are there ways to measure the overt versus covert kind of racism that people Yes, experience. yes. You, you give them um, scenarios, you know, has this happened to you? Um, you know, were you ever turned away from a service for this reason? Or, you know, have you been called the following names sort of thing? Yep, so they, you know, a lot of surveys, if they're smart, shouldn't just say, have you been a victim of racism? It should be, has this, has this particular event happened to you? Kind of thing. Well, I've been hearing, I guess, a lot of, I've been listening to podcasts on racism in America. Who? Uh, Sorry? Podcasts. It's okay. just different people talking yep. about racism in America. And like people that, a lot of, I hear a lot that the overt racism, the covert racism is a lot more harmful than, for them, than the overt types. So I just, yeah. you know, I just thought that was pretty interesting. Yep, sure. I mean, the, the covert racism is um, a far more subjective. Are they just having a grumpy day or are they thinking because of my race? It's yeah, hard to absolutely. Covert is, again, far more elastic and it really does broaden the umbrella. Um, you know, like being in this, this room is fine and there's some Aboriginal artifacts there. I know some people that if those artifacts were not there, they would say that, you know, I am currently in a racist environment. My cultural safety has been compromised. Um, I mean, that'd be a great laugh for me for the day. But other people take it seriously uh, who would suggest, you know, Anthony, are you aware that there was no cultural safety in that room that you were in? Um, well, look at, look at the uh, training that we got from ACU about uh, racism and bullying and some stuff like that, so that if uh, any reasonable person, broadly defined, could possibly think of it as such and such, then it is such and such. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, now look, as an example, one of, one of my esteemed colleagues, and I say this, the word esteem, because that way you won't be able to work out who I'm talking about, because all of my colleagues here are esteemed. So, uh, I sincerely mean that, said to me one day, um, well, if you look around the room as I'm saying this, if you watch the body language, you might be able to work out who it was because they might squirm a little bit when I say this. Said to me, Anthony, are you, um, are you a true Aboriginal or only part Aboriginal? And I had a good laugh and I said, hey, I don't mind hearing that, just be careful. If you say that to other people, you'll be in big trouble. Um, because it was quite a genuine question coming from a very caring um, staff member who has zero racism in them. Um, yet for other people, that would have been an opportunity to jump on and, you know, r r write a thesis about it. So what's the answer to the question? <laughs> I, <laughs> I am part Aboriginal. I, I am part Aboriginal. I have one Aboriginal father and one Aboriginal mother. Uh, one non-Aboriginal mother. One, one non-Aboriginal mother. Um, so I, I consider myself the product of reconciliation. You know, when I have an Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal, uh, you know, one of each. Um, my white mother received a parking ticket from an Aboriginal police officer one day and here I am today. So, uh, <laughs> that that is a that is a true story. Yep, Phil. Let's go back to some of the stats from the beginning. So one of the, the links that you had was uh, to say something like ninety seven percent of uh, Indigenous people uh, say they've experienced racism. Yep. And you then talked about the twenty percent as if those two can't both be simultaneously true, but of course... Two different surveys, yeah. 
Yeah, yep. but, but the, the implicit link that you made is that if, if one is true, the other one can't, but they can both be simultaneously true quite easily. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they were, the, 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 okay, the 20% one um, was on non-Indigenous people um, saying, yeah, it's okay to discriminate. And the other 97% one was for Indigenous people saying, yep, I've been the target of, of racism. And my feelings are 97% one has more room for exaggeration. Okay, I think people are more likely to exaggerate being the target of racism than what people are likely to say, you know, I discriminate against others. Yeah. I mean, isn't the devil's advocate position to say that we, you know, people that hold certain beliefs should express them publicly and therefore won't respond? I mean, to me, no, that no. seems more like, I mean, we even have nice whole psychometric fields you know, what I'm to avoid that. What I'm saying is, uh, the when you know it'd be twenty percent or more. Yeah, it, yeah, could be more because you know there's that um, issue you're talking about that they don't want to present a the true self. Okay. Any other? Do Do you think that people are um, like white people are uncomfortable talking about the problems in the Aboriginal community because? It's not, in, in, and therefore, oh, absolutely. they would rather talk about, you know, there's racism. White people would rather talk about racism than talk about the problems in somebody else's community. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's much easier to say, you know, racism is the problem um, rather than anything else. There's also a reason why you might do that, right? I mean, yeah. I, if I'm part of a community and I can talk about those things because yeah. it's, it's within my power, yeah. but I mean, as a white person standing outside, it's more helpful for me to talk about the racism because it's something I can do something about, right? I mean, that seems... Yes, but in, in my opinion, it's a, it's a smaller contributor. Yeah, but that's what we should be focusing on. Yeah. Yes. What we are contributing. When oh, okay, contributing yeah, okay. Things, yes, yeah, for sure. Oh, so, yeah, absolutely. If there's a way to reduce racism, yep, I will march alongside of you. To, to push the logic a bit more, you know, often you'll say something like, uh, uh, why are you worried about vegetarianism coming from something? Like yep. When there's people dying in Africa or whatever. Uh, For sure, yeah. Is, well, you know, there, there's nothing I can do about that. Good point, yep. This is a smaller problem, but it's something I can do something about. Yeah. And so I wonder whether, you know, a lot of this isn't hiding, but it, it's more a case of here's something that's within the power of a powerful group to own up to and to address. For sure, yeah, and yes, I'm all for doing things within your circle of influence and if pulling someone up who says something or does something nasty, I'm all for that. Um, I'm all for correcting your own behaviour. Um, when people may have had racist attitudes or done racist things, for them changing their behaviour and pointing it out to other people when they do it. So yes, I'm, I'm not downplaying the importance. Of, of that, but I, but, but I think it's um, we've got to do more than because quite often what happens is, for some people, um, they watch a program, hear a statistic or something, and it's oh, this racism is terrible. Okay, well I've done my bit for the day, I've expressed my opposition to it, so I've, I've helped. Where well, you haven't really helped, you may have eased your conscience and you know promoted yourself, but you haven't really helped. I think that um, raising consciousness. Uh, if yeah. all it is, you sit there and go, hmm, I feel better now. I, I, I sat there in my comfortable lounge chair and said, racism is terrible, or well, this station's racist. Oh, and, and um, my sense is that okay. maybe it, uh, it makes you feel worse rather than better. And that the next time, I mean, there's all sorts of subtle forms of racism. And if you raise people's consciousness, uh, they're going to start to look at some of those subtle forms and say, oh, yeah, well, you know... Yeah, sure, good point. Time. Yep, good point. Um, so and that's kind of consistent with what Phil was saying. Um, well, that's a, a lot of the claims coming from the U.S. or whatever is that there's at least some responsibility to consciousness raise or to educate um, and to, you know, so that, that, that book that's out at the moment, uh, 
racism without racism, as for example, talks you know a lot about yeah. the responsibility of educating. For sure, so, but yeah, my message to the um, target groups, the minority groups, so is you know while that's a good thing, don't be dependent upon it. Sure. The, the outsider looking at the For sure. and yeah. it, may be, and it may be quite different. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I certainly don't have any problem with the point where you're trying to balance uh, a perspective that is maybe out of balance. Sure. Uh, I, if, if it were the other way and there was huge denial of racism, then I'd say that that was really terrible as well. That For sure, yeah. Well. I guess one of the points I wanted to make was in academia, though, to promote this view is almost impossible in journals. The dudes that wrote the bell curve did pretty well. Yeah. I mean, oh, well, I'm not saying it's impossible completely, but um, well, it's really difficult. You, you say that. You say that. Oh, look, uh, oh, I've. The, the extreme positions. Uh, define the range that people look at and if you can move if you can move uh, people's thinking so that even if they disagree with you they recognize that as a point that somebody's made then the range becomes this rather than this sure but it'd be great though you know when a reviewer reviews an article but they do publish it though um, and I've had to just crappy feedback, you know, I didn't even say this. And they, it's just absolute nonsense. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much.